Ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget where we are today. We have a House of Delegates that is majority pro-life, majority pro-traditional marriage, majority pro-school choice, and majority pro-religious freedom. We have a Senate that is functionally the same. And now we have candidates on the ballot that will advance these ideas. There are real choices on the ballot this year. Choices many pro-life and pro-family supporters have been waiting decades to make. Virginia's next governor will have an important decision to make. He can continue the abortion center inspections that have found over 300 health and safety violations, or our next governor can model his term after Governor Tom Ridge, who discontinued inspections in Pennsylvania and wound up with Kermit Gosnell's House of Horrors. Virginia's next lieutenant governor will likely determine the party control of the state Senate. That is the difference of whether bills ever arrive on the governor's desk. And the next Attorney General for Virginia will choose whether or not to uphold and defend the people's past constitutional amendment on marriage, securing marriage as between only one man and one woman. The choices are real, and so are the consequences. In 2009, evangelical voters turned out to vote in record numbers, and as a result, Virginia elected what is deemed the most conservative ticket ever. And since then, our values have prospered evidenced by the passage of protections for the unborn, school choice, private property rights, and religious liberty protections for college students and adoption agencies. Election Day, November 5th, is just days away. The stakes are high, and value voters cannot afford to lose. Voter turnout is expected to be low, which means your vote will make that much more of an impact. That is exactly why I am asking you to go to the polls on November 5th and vote according to your values.